Okay, so the new SunGrow single phase solar inverter has hit the Australian market. And this is SunGrow single phase inverter in the two, three, five and eight kilowatt range. In this video, I'm going to do a tech comparison of the SunGrow inverter and, and compare it to what I think is the world's best solar inverter, the Fronius inverter. We're not gonna give any political commentary here about whether you should buy a Chinese inverter or whether you'd rather buy an Austrian inverter, that's up to you. This will be a tech comparison comparing what I think is the world's best inverter with this new massive upgrade to the SunGrow inverter. Okay, so in essence, it's just a couple of features added on to the SunGrow inverter, but they're massive features that I'm gonna talk through and some uh, of the existing features of the SunGrow inverter that we'll compare. The first thing that they've added on is the DC isolator. And the DC isolator first came out, in my understanding, by Fronius uh, back about five years ago that was inbuilt to the inverter, which meant we didn't need to put this external switch next to the inverter that switched off the power from the solar panels. DC is the power that comes from the solar panels. Instead, you've got this nice little integrated switch underneath uh, that just doesn't look messy and you don't have cables between your inverter and your DC switch next to it. But what it also means, what it meant for SunGrow in recent years is that by Australian standards, if that DC isolator, that external DC isolator ever saw sunlight, we could not install it there. So effectively what it meant is the inverter could never be installed in a place that could see eight o'clock in the morning sun or four o'clock in the afternoon sun. It was a little bit of, it's a little bit of an overzealous regulation, um, but effectively what it meant is we were restricted with where we could install SunGrow. But now that they have got this built-in DC isolator, it means we can install it pretty much anywhere in the house. Just incidentally, we have, um, always built this Fronius inverter shield for our Fronius inverters in case we want to install it on the west wall or something like that. Um, and because we're loving this SunGrow inverter so much, we have just designed a new SunGrow inverter shield, which is a really nice slick looking aluminium shield, way better than the tacky looking bunning shields that are gonna fall apart. Um, and uh, it's a full aluminium powder coated shield that we are selling to um, with our installs to our customers in case you want to install your inverter in the sun and you don't want it to overheat. Okay, and the next thing I wanna talk about is the monitoring. There have been some fairly important upgrades to the monitoring and one is a standby mode which uh, keeps the inverter running on standby at night time. And why would you want this to happen? It's for what I call night mode. So when you have a consumption monitor or a smart meter installed with your SunGrow inverter, it, it measures how much power uh, you are taking from the grid and how much solar power you're sending back to the grid. Uh, with night mode now built into the SunGrow inverter, you can read how much power you are consuming from the grid, not just at daytime, but at nighttime when the sun is down because the inverter will no longer just switch off and go to sleep. Now that may sound like a little feature that you can jump into your app and see how much your fridge is using at night, but what it really means is that it collates all of the data that you have over the year that you're using at night and, and day and you get a, a much better snapshot of um, how much you are consuming in your household and how fast your solar power is paying for itself. Now, the next thing with the monitoring is not an addition. This has been there uh, for a while with SunGrow. They have kept their in screen on the inverter. And I think I call this grandma mode. So if grandma is disconnected from the Wi-Fi and absolutely not interested in having an app, you still want someone coming around, uh, being able to come around and look at the inverter and not just seeing a red light that says the inverter is off or a green light that says the inverter is on but you really get an understanding of, you know, on a good day, did that system produce 24 kilowatt hours or is it producing five kilowatt hours and you probably got a problem. So the fact that SunGrow have kept the screen like the Fronius inverter has at the moment, I think that's a really great addition. I think it's a really important thing for future years and especially for if, if for whatever reason you lose connection to your monitoring. Now, one thing I will say negative about the screen is the buttons on the on the screen are just ridiculously difficult to use. Um, if you want to go further into settings, you probably don't want to use those buttons. They're, they're annoying, <laughs> but that's okay. You can direct connect with your app if you're an installer and you know what you're doing. Now, the next big update with the monitoring, and this was quite a, a surprise to me. I got a call from my friend, Nigel Morris at Solar Analytics the other day, who asked me if I wanted to test out their new integration with the SunGrow inverter. So what Solar Analytics is, it's, it's the leading inverter or third party inverter monitoring platform. So you buy some hardware off there, you put it in the switchboard and it monitors what your house is using and what the solar is producing. 
puts all that information together. It tells you if it's working well on a rainy day and it, and it compares data with other systems and things like that. It's, it really is, that's all they do. They do inverter and, um, and household monitoring. They don't make hardware for inverters. And so they're really, really good at it and they're getting a lot of updates all the time. What uh, Solar Analytics has done now, it's gone to SunGrow and said, hey, how about we take your data and we upload it to this platform and we'll charge our subscribers, you know, 100, 150 bucks or something to, to get access to that. But you don't have to buy the Solar Analytics hardware now if you've got SunGrow. You just have to pay for access to that really user-friendly and really in-depth information. And what is really interesting about this for me is that Solar Analytics now have access to the DC power. So the the solar panel side of that information and they're going to be able to put that on their platform which they can't do uh, without the access to the inverter so a great a great win for SunGrow and a great win for solar analytics and i'm looking forward to doing the beta testing on that and when that when we can roll that out to our customers as well which will be coming soon okay the next thing i want to talk about is the build of the inverter and the cooling and SunGrow say they have uh natural cooling which makes you think they don't have a fan Actually, you pull the inverter apart and you look inside and you do have this little internal computer fan. So I don't know how natural and, you know, electrically running fan is. Um, and, you know, re in reality, that is a weak point, I guess, on an inverter. Uh, Fronius gets a lot of flack about their fans. So they've got a fantastic cooling system. They've got fairly large one or two fans on the outside of the inverter. And this cooling chamber that draws the heat away from a massive heat sink. Uh, and they've got a really big bodied inverter so that the, you know, the, the elect electronics or the circuit boards and the most importantly, the electric electrolytic capacitors um, don't heat up too much. Now SunGrow have just done what many other inverters do and have this tiny little fan in there that, that circulates the air so you don't get hot spots in this tiny little case. Um, and in reality, I think you've got one thing, you've got a weak point there with a fan, just as Fronius has a weak point with their fan. And the other thing, you don't have anywhere near the cooling capacity that Fronius has. And to me, that just screams out a longevity problem. And it's why I still think that Fronius is a superior inverter when you're talking about longevity and inverter build. Oh yes, and one thing that I should mention about the Fronius fan, the reason they get flack is the noise of the fan. And yes, it makes about, you know, it's noisier at lunchtime on a summer's day than a fridge, maybe a fridge fan, or it's probably less less noisy than an outdoor aircon unit. So don't install a Fronius inverter in your bedroom or in your living room or something, you know, at your front door. Um, but, you know, if you really have to install your inverter in a, a location and you really want it to be quiet and noise is your number one problem, well, SunGrow is a great option. So let's keep on talking about the SunGrow inverter. So if we move on and look at a couple of things that are on the spec sheet about the SunGrow inverter, one is surge protection. And on the front of the spec sheet, it says surge protection on the AC and the DC. And when I saw that, I got a little bit excited and I went down the rabbit hole and tried to work out what they were talking about. It turns out they were just talking about a metal oxide varista or a varista that, that you have to have in um, every single inverter by international standards or IEC 62910. You have to have this, um, this what they're calling a surge diverter um, in every inverter. What I understood as surge diverter is something that we sometimes install on, on our commercial installs or, or on installs that are um, prone to lightning strikes or what I have on my own house here is um, a, a, a sacrificial surge diverter that we install at the switchboard that if it blows, you can replace the product and it takes fairly decent lightning strikes on, on the street outside. This is not what SunGrow are offering. They're just offering what everyone else is offering by international standards on the market. So it's not a feature at all. But what is a feature and what is also on the front page of the spec that you may look over is this AFCI or arc fault circuit interruption. Uh, so this is the reason that I was creating fires on the DC isolators on my roof to see how the SunGrow would interact with it. So AFCI, arc fault circuit interruption, does exactly that. When you have an arc on your roof, it interrupts the circuit. And so it's been around for a while and it's been a known issue with earlier model inverters um, and uh, in the States, in just in their houses, they have problems where they maybe, you know, when you plug in your laptop um, computer and your, or laptop charger and you pull it out and you see an arc at the power point, they were having issues with um, arc fault circuit interruption being picked up in their house with things like that. Or maybe, you know, you plug in a grinder or a welder or a, or a large device and you, and you have this kind of arc within the system and you'd get this nuisance tripping. 
Well, um, SunGrow have really tweaked that and they were the first to bring it in inverters in the Australian market. Uh, Huawei have just brought it out. It's just landed uh, in our warehouse yesterday. So Huawei also have this arc fault circuit interruption. But I wanted to know how well it works. So we got up on the roof and we started doing massive arcs on our DC isolator, putting our isolators underwater on the roof um, and, and drying them, not drying them out, but letting them run moist and, and seeing if we could do it. And at one stage we had arcs for a solid 30 seconds on the inverter and the arc fault circuit interruption did not work. We burnt out isolators, got new ones, kept on running the test and we couldn't get it to work. And probably after about 10 times, we finally got the arc fault circuit interruption to activate. So you're not gonna have problems with nuisance tripping with the SunGrow AFCI, but you, you know, I'm starting to wonder whether it's actually gonna work at all. I'll tell you what, I've got a better idea. I don't get a monkey for an installer. It, it's, it's not too difficult to install um, a, a system properly. And although you, know, you can get issues every now and then, if you install the system well, you've got a very low chance of having a problem on your roof in the first place. So most importantly, don't worry about the equipment as much as you worry about the people that are installing it um, so you don't create fires on your roof. Okay, and the next thing that I wanna talk about is SunGrow have backed this product and have upped their warranty to a full 10 year warranty and that is parts and labor. So if you have a problem in the next 10 years, and I can guarantee you, I've worked with SunGrow for a long time. We will be being their service partners for Southeast Queensland for us a long time. And they are, they are ridic ridiculously generous with their warranty. Um, and in, in many cases, they just go too far. So you're not gonna have a problem if you uh, need to claim a warranty on your SunGrow inverter. Um, in saying that, Fronius, uh, by standard, is a five plus five year warranty. At MC Electrical, we offer a full 10 year warranty as because we're Fronius uh, service partners or solution partners plus. And um, uh, so it is on now on par for us with the Fronius inverter, which is really good to know. Okay, so that's about a wrap of my review of the SunGrow inverter and a comparison to the Fronius. Now, let me know which way would you go. If it's about $500 difference, it, would you go with what I consider to be a better inverter uh, as a build and, and what I consider will probably last longer in the Fronius inverter? Or would you save your 500 bucks and go for the SunGrow inverter, which really has pretty much all the features that the uh, Fronius inverter will have, especially if you connect, connect it up to solar analytics monitoring, it's gonna, it's gonna be a fairly uh, a knockdown offering. Um, so drop us some comments down below, tell, tell us what you think about it. Um, and give us a like, a thumbs up, and uh, even subscribe to this blog. We're gonna continue pumping out a whole heap more content uh, to do with solar inverter reviews and panel reviews and things like that. So um, actually, I think that was just a comment down below at the moment. So I'm gonna go downstairs and grab that. See ya.